Hi everyone, can you hear me? Perfect, okay. So hi everyone, uh, my name is Vijitha Mahalingam. I'm a Medical University of the Americas alumni. And thank you so much for joining me today to speak about my experience and uh, matching into a Canadian residency. And um, I'm also grateful for the opportunity to um, answer your questions as well too. So what's gonna happen today is I have a list of questions that I'm gonna be going over. And at the end of the session, I will be more than happy to answer your questions. And you know, if you do have any concerns or anything, we can address it at that time, or you can always email uh, MUA and they will get back to me. So, uh, like I said, uh, my name is Vijitha Mahalingam and uh, I am a MUA alumni. And I went to undergraduate uh, school in Canada. I am Canadian and I went to McMaster University. I specialized in life sciences, took a lot of biology and psychology courses as well. And during my time in undergrad, I did want to become a doctor. However, I was still skeptical to see if that would be the right thing for me. I wanted to kind of expose myself and try to see if medicine is something that I really truly am passionate about. So after undergrad, I went to Toronto, uh, worked at Toronto General Hospital as a clinical coordinator. And in this role is where I really understood how much physicians do for us, as well as seeing the physician and patient role. And this made me appreciate medicine to a different degree and allowed me to want to become a doctor. So I applied for a uh, Canadian uh, medical schools. Of course, it's very tough here. And I looked at other options as well. And that is when I came across MUA. I looked at forms. I knew some stuff about Caribbean schools, but not too much about it. So I looked at forms uh, to see which one would be the best fit for me. And I came across MUA and was very excited about getting to know more about the school. The things that I specifically were looking for was things such as a small class size, uh, you know, Canadians actually matching into residency. Um, that was very, very uh, a highlight part of why I chose MUA. And uh, that was one of the reasons that I actually wanted to come because of the high pass rate that MUA had. I also looked at other things uh, such as, you know, feedback from other upper years and school members. And a lot of people had great things to say about MUA. So with all these in mind, um, you know, it was a great school where I would be approved for Canadian loans too. I uh, called the admission office and when I spoke to them, I knew that this was where I wanted to be. You know, sometimes we don't know how things uh, work out, but when we talk to someone and you learn more about their school, this is where you kind of understand, you know, this is, it, they seem so welcoming. This is probably somewhere where I would actually succeed and uh, grow um, as a person. So that is how I actually uh, came to MUA. 
the uh, another question that I was asked to um, answer was share your experiences in basic science, you know, any specific courses or anything that I found uh, that kind of uh, highlighted at the school. So, you know, coming to the island is always something very new, but Emmy Way gave me the basic foundation of medicine. This is where I learned about hard work, discipline, and you know, I got to know so many people that were all had a common goal of wanting to become a doctor, getting that second chance of becoming a doctor. You know, we couldn't, um, we all came to this uh, new island to make sure that we achieve our dreams and goals. And anyway, prepped me more than anything, you know, taking classes such as anatomy, biochemistry. And, you know, at that time, there was something called introduction to clinical medicine. And that was a very, very highlighted course. Med one, you learn the little, little clinical skills, such as history, physical examinations. These are the skills that you're going to be taking on as a resident in the future. So these were um, courses where I got to work with other classmates, got to work with uh, professors in the ultimate goal of, um, you know, learning clinical medicine that I actually was able to use during my clinical medicine time as well as the professors were great, always going above and beyond to answer your questions. I remember going to my pathology class um, and learning um, a lot about, you know, pathology, how systems work and having that office hour where I could just walk into uh, my professor's office and ask him a question for five minutes even was one of the highlights that I think that made me come a well-rounded uh, person to actually apply to my board exams. So in all, um, in everything, uh, MUA gave me that basic foundation and that discipline and that hard work. As well as when I came to the island, there was a mentorship program. So they connected me with other individuals that were from Canada or America who had some similar common goals and interests. And I got to speak beforehand with someone that actually uh, went through all of the steps before me. So, you know, having that guidance, whether it's about books, finding a place to live, or whether it's, you know, just kind of getting a sense of how the island life would be. I was able to, um, you know, excel and get to know more about the program. So the basic sciences allows you to connect with other students. It allows you to excel and gives you that resources and help that you're going to be using for your board examinations. We also have something called the Kaplan course, which really, really prepped me for my USMLE exam. So these are things that are are some of the highlights in basic sciences. And the other question that I had was, how was your prep for USMLE step one and were you happy with how you did? MUA prepped me so well that um, I was able to leave as a competent physician when I left. Um, having that Kaplan course, like I said, in our last semester gave me the discipline and gave me that background to start studying earlier um, and to excel in my board examinations. We also, uh, you know, basic sciences gave me the foundation of hard work and discipline. We got to connect with upper meds, asking them advice on how to prep using question banks, which we all started earlier too. So um, through all of this, I was very happy with my results and you know it was something to talk about when I went to um, interviews you know it was a it was a well well structured curriculum and so a little bit about uh, clinical rotations this is something that I wanted to focus on um, and how I matched into Canada so the importance of clinical rotations is I can't even express how important it is. This is where you're going to be learning the key skills and how to become a physician. And you know, you get to work with residents one on one. They they teach you how to use the computer programs, how to do procedures, how to do a good physical and history examination. Having someone, 
you know, to round with doing the assessment and plans. This was all very, very beneficial. MUA has great affiliations with different hospitals. I was very fortunate uh, to do all my uh, core rotations in New York, Chicago, um, Oklahoma, as well as uh, places like in Toronto, where I got to work at um, Ontario Shores, which is an affiliation with the University of Toronto. So one thing that I wanted to express about uh, clinical rotations is that it gives you the groundwork to see what you really like. I started off with my internal medicine rotation and uh, during that time there was opportunities for me to go above and beyond. Uh, whether it was volunteering at a health fair, I got to work alongside with residents, um, see how they're interacting with the community members as well as you know uh, contributing to the community and one thing that i would emphasize is that you know you take the opportunity from clinical uh rotations and do your best you can they're here to help you residents are here to help you the attendings are here to help you and you know you make the most of what you put in whether it's coming early and leaving later whether it's you know questions whether it's taking part in procedures I remember in my family medicine rotation, um, I wanted to do some procedures and watch my residents do procedures. So we worked in, um, we worked together with the internal medicine team. So everyone is a big group. And this is where you get to learn and see things firsthand. Um, you know, for me at Ontario Shores, when I did my psychiatry uh, core, rotation it was actually very beneficial because um, I got to work one-on-one -on -one with my attendings and when I started developing an interest in psychiatry I was still unsure but when I spoke to my attendings they actually encouraged me to see other departments um, so therefore I got to go work at uh, the eating disorders unit for three days I got to see the geriatrics unit. I got to work with the neuropsychiatry unit. So it was, you know, you, you get what you put in. So if you have that opportunity just to even see if you like this, you know, one, one day or two day out of, you know, your four week rotation, six week rotation, take it because this will literally expose you to see what you really, really like and what works for you. So when I started my rotations, I thought, you know, internal medicine was for me. And then I go to family medicine and I was like, hey, I get to see a lot of inpatient and family medicine too. Uh, let me see some outpatient. So I asked residents, hey, can I come shadow you in clinic? And they were so receptive. They were very open to having extra help and to teach you. So, you know, take this time to go above and beyond because this is what's going to make and highlight your letter of recommendation. These unique characteristics going out of your way is going to really show how much you're passionate about medicine and your attendings will see that, you know, whether it's for getting, giving you evaluations or whether it's for an LOR. You want them to write something so unique about you. And uh, so Again, take that opportunity to learn as much as you can, procedures, everything. Um, I also want to emphasize the importance of uh, doing a clerkship in what you're interested in. Uh, whether it's, you know, you're interested in psychiatry, you kind of want to see psychiatry, go do an elective. If it's, you know, family medicine, you want to see how inpatient and outpatient is, do an elective in that two weeks, four weeks, you know, use this time to really see what you like. Uh, one thing that I can emphasize is do an elective or do a core rotation where you could potentially match. You know, they see you firsthand on how you're going to be working, how you will be as a resident. You know, this is where you're going to be uh, putting all your 100%. And as much as we think like, you know, no one notices, of course everyone notices. And, you know, during my interview time, that was one of my highlights uh, that I actually took the opportunity to do uh, my electives in different, different states. It made me become a well-rounded person, very adaptable to situations, and I was willing to move around. And that was very something that everyone appreciated because, you know, not everyone gets that experience. 
as well as you know um, connecting with other classmates in other schools you you have this big huge community of medical students and you know people are willing to go above and beyond to help you so use those resources as well as oh just to mention um, I actually did some electives in uh, Ontario as well too because I was thinking about wanting to match into Canada and you know during this time I when I went to interviews, I actually got questions asked, how do you compare and contrast the Canadian and American healthcare system? So people notice that. And you know, when you're able to adapt to different healthcare systems in different states, it's gonna be um, something that's gonna help you uh, become a well-rounded person. And it's gonna be something that, you know, you can um, always talk about uh, with others. You know, I've moved around. I got to uh, see how well I work in different states and different environments, learn more about their culture and community as well too. And uh, lastly, uh, talking about my match process and specifically how I got into Canada. One thing I want to tell everyone is that every single place that I went to, all I heard from American students, Canadian students, is that Canada is so hard to get into. Of course it is, but it's not impossible. So if this is what you want to do, don't give up because there is a light at the end of the tunnel and you have to put in that 100% effort and work and trust me, it will show. You know, for my match process, what um, helped me was that I got to do an RLRA uh, project. That is something that our school does, um, or MUA does, right after you write your USMLE Step 1 exam. This is your first exposure in a research project. And you see how um, you know you work uh, well with uh, an advisor, and you learn about how to write a research project. So this was my first exposure. I didn't know much um, about you know researching, writing a project, but we had our professors help us, guide us, edit it, and you know go through approval and give us feedback. So that was one of the highlights that. I really, really appreciate till this day because um, when I went to uh, do some electives in uh, to get into psychiatry, I actually ended up writing a research project. Uh, there was two actually, and um, I wrote the whole uh, research ethics protocol uh, publication just so that we can get this research project going. And whatever you can do to make yourself you know, uh, out there, it's do it. You know, um, when I was working with my attendings, they were a little hesitant uh, to do these research projects because, you know, it takes a long time. But because I had that experience, I was able to use the skills that I learned, the research, everything into um, helping bring that research ethics protocol. So one thing that I would say about the Ontario or Canadian residency is that, you know, your board exams are important. There is the NAC OSCE and the QE1 that you have to write. And I cannot emphasize how much, how important it is. This is these are the marks that are really going to help filter you into uh, potentially getting an interview. So, you know, do as much as high as you can, prepare as much as you can, talk to other people, see what worked for them, and just know that, you know, it's possible. You know, don't, uh, don't think that, you know, you don't have a chance. Do these exams, you know, try it. There's resources out there to help you. Um, secondly, try to do an elective if you can in somewhere in Canada to try to get that letters of recommendation. For me, um, what I did was I ended up doing research uh, with uh, some of my attendings that I worked with. And, you know, I got one to go to publication um, and the other one's pending publication. You know, I was fortunate because they got to see my work ethic um, in a Canadian residency or a Canadian elective. So little, little things like this, I think, goes a long way to kind of, you know, uh, make you a well-rounded person and shows your interest in a specific uh, discipline. Uh, I also did a case report. Um, you know, this was something that a lot of people um, can be doing. It's me and my colleague in one of my family medicine uh, electives in Canada. You know, we saw uh, a case. 
we wanted to find a solution. We spoke to our attending. He was so receptive to writing a case report. And, you know, we went out, wrote a case report, and then it put it to a poster presentation. So you have help where you really, really put yourself out there. So, you know, going above and beyond, it doesn't have to be something, you know, extraordinary. It could be some research, small little research project, you know, talking to your attending, see if they need help with anything. So um, that I felt like really kind of helped me in outlining my passion for psychiatry, as well as extracurricular activities. You know, um, it's, I know we're all busy with medical school, so, it's very hard uh, to like have that, you know, one or two um, hours to dedicate. But even if it's something through online, you know, um, I worked with the helpline for Toronto Distress Center and it was an online chat form. All that required was me to have an internet connection and I volunteered for a couple of hours. So there is little, little, little things that you can do away when you're doing a rotation um, as well, too. So I feel like uh, these things, uh, you know, brought in my um, ed or gave me that advantage to match into whether it was a Canadian or American. This is not going to be specific for just a Canadian. These things are only going to highlight you and help you for an American residency too. You know, you don't need research, but hey, if you do have that extra time, why not? Sometimes, you know, attendings are looking for people that want, they want uh, to help, whether it's something small like, you know, volunteering at health fairs or, you know, um, volunteering with somewhere other way, you know, utilize that time just so that, you know, you are out there and you can put something on your CV as well too and you can talk about something when you go to an interview. So ultimately, um, that is how I ended up on my top choice of psychiatry. It, there is no single recipe. Uh, to match anywhere. It takes a lot of hard work and, you know, a lot of time and dedication, but it's not impossible. Whether it's American or Canadian, you can do it. And little, little things to highlight your passion, figure out, you know, use those clinical rotations to figure out what your passion is and go from there. Uh, see where you can volunteer, talk to your attending, get to know them, you know, see if they're working on any projects or, you know, express your interest about you know, whether you want to do internal medicine or family medicine or psychiatry, you would be surprised how much people are willing to go out of their way to help you. And, you know, I feel that, um, you know, your board exams, USMLE step one, step two, these are things that you should focus on because at the end of the day, you know, your board exams are going to give you that leap way to getting an interview. But all these other things are just going to highlight your application even more and, you know, make you that well-rounded person. So, yep, that was my whole spiel about getting into a Canadian residency um, in psychiatry. I actually, uh, you know, found my passion through my rotation and I wouldn't have been able to under know that psychiatry was for me if I didn't have that opportunity in my clinical rotation. So use that time wisely. So now I will be answering um, questions uh, that anyone uh, has. So shoot away. <laughs> okay, so Peter says, can you tell us how you managed to get electives in um, Canada? Thanks, Peter, for the, that question. So I actually applied um, through the AFMC portal and um, unfortunately didn't get any, um, you know, electives. It's a lottery base, lottery based uh, program. So I was not able to um, get something like that. So fortunately, um, MUA has an affiliation with uh, Ontario Shores, which is an affiliated University of uh, Toronto teaching hospital. So that's where I got to uh, do my psychiatry and family medicine uh, electives. Oh, thank you. Honestly, uh, Kadir, thank you for the time of you sharing this. I just want to motivate other people to let them know that it is possible. You know, sometimes we're scared. We don't know um, what's out there, but hey, it's doable and use your resources. I was very fortunate that, 
you know, my uh, clinical coordinator always uh, looked out for me, you know, emailing me, letting, asking me, hey, like, what's going to be your next rotation? What is your interest? Um, and I remember calling her and talking to her and she's like, hey, why don't you think about doing a rotation here? You know, doing a rotation in Louisiana, Oklahoma, you know, try to kind of disperse yourself into different um, environments. So, you know, use your school resources. And again, there's so many people willing to help because we were all in the same boat at one point. So thank you. Um, Ab Abina says, were there any moments you felt like quitting because it was too hard? If so, how did you overcome those feelings? Yes, <laughs> there was so many times where I doubted myself, you know? It's like, is this for me? It seems like a struggle. I don't know how many times I cried. You know, at the end of the day, we are all human. You know, we go through different, different um, problems, different situations, and whether it's medically related or non-medical, it's okay to understand that you have these low periods or you're feeling a little down, you know? I always tell myself, nothing is ever permanent. It's all a temporary feeling. So, you know, it's okay to take that a day or two to kind of feel sad and be like, okay, I don't know what I'm doing. I feel a little, you know, uneasy. But the next day or next two days, get up and move. As long as you keep moving and you're pushing yourself, I think that is the best thing you can do for yourself. That just understanding everything is temporary and that there is a light at the end of the tunnel and you can do it if you just put your mind to it and don't let anybody stop you. You know, I had people going, oh, this is hard, that's hard, it's impossible. And you kind of look at it like, oh, maybe it is because, you know, that person's telling me but you'll never know until you try. So I think like, you know, it's okay to have those sad feelings, but don't dwell in it. Get up and start moving. You know, as long as you're moving and trying to push yourself through something, that's all that matters. Peter says, if there's one thing you could give those in clinicals right now, what would it be? That's a very good question. I would say your attendings are willing to help you. If there is a case that you feel is so different and unique and you want to write, you know, a quick case report um, or try to do research, ask them. The worst that someone's going to say is no. Don't ever feel like, oh, you know, me asking, I don't think they're going to say yes to anything. I think like clinical rotations is where I was able to get to know my attendings better. Like at one point, um, I finished a rotation for one week with one of my attendings, but I enjoyed it so much that I contacted him through email and was like, hey, is there any any way I can come see you and, you know, work with you in your outpatient clinic for two hours after, you know, the, after my clinical rotations. And he was so receptive. And this is a person that ended up giving me a letter of recommendation. So what I think is going above and beyond and using that time really does show uh, your attending, really does show your residents that you're so passionate about this. And trust me, it highlights in your letters of recommendation that they're going to be uh, giving for you. And you know, these are people that you could network with. And these are people that are willing to um, help you. So I think taking that initiative, and you know, coming in early, staying later, putting your hands on procedures, trying to learn or just volunteering for something, you know, asking them, how can I learn more from you? I think that goes a long way. Does anyone else have any other questions? Okay. Oh, yeah. What was the most rewarding experience during your time at um, MUA? Thank you, Sharika, for that question. My most rewarding experience during my time would be the long lasting friendships that I made. These are people that went above and beyond for me during my interview time. You know, they're in residency and they take their time to help me prep for my interviews, help guide me through what electives are going to be good for me. So 
for me, my experience at MUA would be like the friendships that I made. I wouldn't have been able to have that uh, friendship with all these people. And I'm still great friends with them uh, till this day. And I see that, you know, they went above and beyond for me, trying to make sure that I'm good, trying to make sure that I can match, giving me any little, little tips um, and, you know, telling me to always stay humble, to always be a good person and to always, you know, um, give it my 101% because you don't want to ever regret leaving something knowing that you haven't given it your all. So, you know, friendships are so important. Uh, connecting with other classmates, people are here to help. You know, people want to see other people do well. And so I think like the friendships is something that is going to, that is my most rewarding experience. I would not trade, um, you know, going to another school because I met amazing people who were my mentors, who have guided me through each step and who really helped me to become and to be where I am today. Um, and Parison said, what advice would you give to medical students who are, who are having to help out with the coronavirus outbreak? and in the future having the responsibility to deal with the crisis. Um, I know, uh, I can't speak for Americans, but I know in Canadians, um, there is uh, organizations that medical students are doing to help relieve the stress and the burden on the Canadian healthcare system, whether it's like helping with daycare, uh, shopping for groceries, little, little things um, around, uh, little, little things go a long way. So you know, uh, we're not able to do take on a bigger role because of, you know, liability issues at this point. But I think like doing little, little stuff to help our physicians, to help our nurses, to help our healthcare team really does go a long way. And, you know, medical students are here to help. Residents are here to help. So I would honestly ask you to reach out to your um, attendings, see if they need any support, you know, offer anything that you can. If it's a rotation that you're currently doing right now, you know, do that rotation and sit there and, you know, talk to them about how you can relieve that burden on our healthcare system. So sometimes you don't need to be the front line, but little things um, outside that could relieve that burden for the physicians, our nurses and healthcare professionals go a long way and in the future having the responsibility to deal with crisis. You know, medical students are here to help. This is uh, not a point where you're gonna be learning. This is a point where you're gonna see um, how everything's gonna be dealt with. It's an emergent situation. People are going everywhere. So I think um, working together in a, in a group really does go a long way. Amalyn said, uh, what were some of the challenges you faced throughout your journey? I would say uh, there were uh, quite a few challenges, um, you know, whether it was financial, um, whether it was trying to figure out what uh, rotations to do, whether it was studying for, you know, my board exams and making sure that I do well in them. You know, some of the challenges that I faced uh, were trying to see if this was uh, the right thing for me. Am I studying in the right path? Am I going in the right path? Is this going to lead me to residency? So, uh, you know, financially, my parents helped me. Um, I had great support from them. So I was a little bit uh, okay in that sense. But when it came to emotionally, that was a whole big challenge that I didn't expect to uh, face. Because, you know, you go through ups and downs, through friendships, through so many things. And these were um, other challenges that I felt that, you know, added to my journey and made me become an empathetic, a competent, and, you know, someone that could actually put myself in the situation of patience and it made me a stronger person because I went through these challenges you know emotionally you know whether it was physically because at the end of the day our patients are you know uh, people with family just like I have my family and for me to relate uh, to them to hear their story I felt that it made me a stronger person um, and a stronger uh, person to deal with this. Uh, Chan says, hello, doctor. What was Nevis like? How was the transition to island life? 
Thank you for that question. Nevis was amazing. Um, I've never, before medical school, um, I never went away to a Caribbean island, never even did a resort. So my first experience coming was uh, very scary. So again, the mentorship program was there to um, help guide me and kind of introduce me to somebody that was already there. Uh, Nevis was a great island where it was uh, very small, but it was a close knit community. Community. And I got to meet so many people. There were so many Canadians that came. There's so many Americans. And it was an environment where I got to study, um, excel, as well as, you know, have fun going for a beach day, going to a restaurant, or going to a block party after a block exam. Um, so the transition to island life was hard. Uh, in the beginning, I cried, calling home I wanted to leave, but that's with everything. A new environment, a new change is always so hard. So I would always tell you if you are making that transition to come to Nevis, to an island, you know, know, understand that we've all been there and that it's a hard transition. And it's okay to feel that because I felt it and so many other people have felt it. So, you know, just take it one day and step at a time. Looking backwards, I actually miss the island and I want to go back. But I'm so grateful for that journey uh, to be there. And so many great memories at Nevis, whether it was studying, having fun with friends and, you know, um, doing so many activities I wouldn't have done otherwise. Samantha. How would you say your previous education experience prepared you for entering medical school? What is the most valuable course or experience to help prepping for entering medical school? That's a great question. So uh, my previous education experience, I went to uh, McMaster University. I think undergraduate uh, courses, it's a little different than the courses that you take in uh, in you know medical school but one course that I did take was my anatomy and physiology in undergrad and I think that helped me so much to expose me to uh, my medical education our first course um, in med one is anatomy and physiology so you know having that course having that background even if it's not in detail even if it's um, you know not into a lot of depth you still have that exposure of anatomy and what to look for and I feel that experience in that specific course made me excel in my anatomy and physiology class because of the fact that you know I had that background I got to uh, take little little courses you know same with psychology courses um, I took some animal behavior I took some personality courses as well too and these are things that you're going to be learning so you know taking these courses are all going to um, help you in one form or another even if it's not fully like a single topic or here and there so for me, anatomy um, is the most memorable because as soon as I transitioned to medical school, it was like, oh, I know, you know, I know where this is. I know where that is. And you're kind of building up on essential uh, skills that you already have. Caddy, uh, do you know about people who are having kids while in medical school in the island? How are they doing? Thank you. Um, yes, I do. Uh, so many people uh, came to um, the island who had families. And you know, there is so many resources. There's so many help. The professors have um, family members. There's, it's a whole big community. Um, you know, if you wanna get learn more about uh, which resources are there for uh, helping people who have kids and family members, please reach out to MUA. But from what I remember, there was like a lot of people where their kids were going to school who participated in our events. And you know, these were some close friends, these were other classmates and these were professors. So don't ever feel if you are thinking about coming that you know, you have to leave your family behind. This is a great environment for you to excel along with your family. Laxmi, how did you stay so positive throughout your journey? Thank you for that question. You know, um, I think in life, we have to understand that sometimes it's okay to feel sad. You know, people talk about being a positive person, uh, you know, having that positivity. So what is exactly being that positive, you know, person over that positivity? It's just, for me, my definition is understanding that, you know, 
give it your 100%, surround yourself with people who are going to help you, who are going to help you realize your strengths. So many times that I, you know, I felt so down, my friends picked me up, my family uh, members uh, reminded me of how far I came along in the journey, how far I've, you know, grew as a person. So I think, uh, you know, staying positive, knowing that everything is going to work out. And even if it doesn't, it's okay. Like for me, I came with the notion that it's going to be hard, but as long as I give it my 120%, at least I will know that I gave it my all and that I can live with myself for that at the end of the day. The worst thing you can do to yourself is not try something that you're so passionate about, whether it's medical or non-medically. So, you know, staying positive with surrounding yourself with people who are going to encourage you, you know, hearing other classmates' stories, you know, uh, connecting with people and doing little, little things like going for for a walk, um, you know, understanding that situations are temporary and it's okay. We're all human. We all feel this way and it's okay. Don't, you know, beat yourself up for it. Just don't dwell on it, dwell on it forever. Ah, uh, Sharika, how did you manage the workload throughout your studies? It was very intense. Um, what I did was I, so med one, um, you know, you're thrown into doing all these courses, anatomy, physiology, histology, and you don't know how to do and manage all this. And I think it's something that we all experience, you know, um, everyone kind of goes through that period of confusion, what is actually working for me. So I think um, to understand is uh, managing the course load, prioritizing, you know, seeing what your strengths are getting that extra help, you know, having that repetition, practicing. I, for me, what I did really well and I felt like really helped me with my board examinations was repetition, practice, 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 so that I wasn't um, having to relearn everything. So as soon as you're done uh, class that day, go through your notes. And you know, the next day when you learn something new, a new material, Focus on a little bit of time, like a couple of minutes on um, what you learned the previous day so that it's always fresh on your mind. So managing your course load uh, or managing my workload, it was tough, but I used little, little techniques that, you know, my other classmates were using and what worked for them, you know, prioritizing, building up on a little bit. And it's okay to feel overwhelmed. You know, we can't ever know every single detail, but just understanding the big picture and moving forward. Uh, Niroshini, how did you prepare for your interviews? Great question. Um, I was so excited. I got interviews that <laughs> I was like, how do I prepare for this? Um, I actually used a lot of resources online, um, you know, looked at your strengths weaknesses. I used a program or organization from uh, Canada called Health Force Ontario, who kind of gave me um, techniques on how to, uh, you know, redo my CV and um, CV as well as uh, my personal statement. They're not going to edit it for you, but they will kind of give you the framework. So what I did for my American interviews was that I connected with a lot of my uh, colleagues and my friends who were residents, uh, you know, spoke to them. I saw, read about the program first, you know, got through the whole uh, biggest strengths and, you know, weaknesses, why I'm passionate about that discipline, whether it was internal medicine, family or psychiatry. But, you know, ideally they are looking for interviews you as a person, you know, if you've gotten the interview, you have the uh, board scores. But after that, it's all about how you do as a person in the interview, you know, how how well you work and how much you're going to be getting along with the other residents. So for me, what worked for me was um, using the resources of friends, uh, checking online, you know, um, using the NRMP webinar that uh, kind of guided me out. Uh, for my Canadian um, interviews, it was a whole different uh, ball game, but I reached out to um, Health Force Ontario, which, uh, you know, kind of guided me along like what to look for and expect um, uh, for the questions, but, you know, it didn't, uh, none of the questions came on my um, interview, but it made me kind of think outside the box and kind of think about all these other scenarios and other um, things that I wouldn't have thought about myself. So I think, uh, you know, use, utilizing all resources you can possible 
the internet, connecting with people, talk to your advisors, um, you know, talk to your school. I think any little help uh, goes a long way, but ultimately they really do want to see you as a person and how you're going to, you know, work well with them um, in the future. Uh, Sukwinder said, what resources do you recommend or have you used to study for a step? Uh, for my step exam, I used, uh, you know, for my step one, I used uh, Kaplan. That's what our school uh, really prepped us on. And I already had that foundation in my Med 5 semester. And I built um, on that using UWorld. I didn't want to use too many resources. And I think um, for me, using the limited amount of resources helped because it was just trying to get the bigger picture rather than getting caught up in too much of the little details. I felt that I was doing that in the beginning and you know after that when I was doing the questions it made me kind of be like no even if they reword the question different ways I'm gonna have to um, you know focus on other aspects in the whole bigger picture so I would say you know try to uh, use uh, UWorld as well as you know one or two resources that your school recommends or something that uh, has worked for others. And do you have any tips for step two CK study? Uh, yes, I do. Uh, that was something that um, I feel very, very happy about. You know, I one of my friends uh, gave me a quick pep talk about my step two CK and really helped me drill how important it was, um, you know, in doing well and for my interviews. So what I used was a U World um, and did more system based kind of a progression as well as I utilized my clinical rotations um, during that time to learn. Sometimes, you know, if you're seeing like certain procedures or seeing like um, certain syndromes, I was able to be like, oh, I remember seeing that um, during my rounding with my professor. I wonder how you diagnose this. I wonder what the treatment is. And, you know, having, having that correlation really allowed me to excel in my step two. And I felt really, really helped me. So, you know, every time you're studying for a uh, step two, just if you can, try to visualize the person. And sometimes, you know, close your eyes think like you're in front of that patient and that person has this, 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 what are you going to do um, next step and how are you going to treat them? So when I did, did it in that kind of approach, it really helped me. But again, you know, repetition, 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 questions, um, you know, using, we have shelf exams after our core rotations and doing well on that ultimately creates that basic foundation into doing well um, on your board exam. Uh, Shivan said, do you know right away that you wanted to go into medical school? You know, growing up, um, medicine was something that I really, really enjoyed. But sometimes I, you don't know what being a doctor entails. So for me, you know, I saw my doctor uh, doing all these things for patients, you know, taking care of me and my family. But I didn't really see and get that exposure in a hospital to see what they really, really do. So for me, um, I did think about it in undergrad, uh, whether I wanted to do medical school, but, and that's why I ended up working at Toronto General Hospital. And that gave me the exposure firsthand to see, you know, from the physician side as well as a patient side you know as soon as they finish um, one of their appointments they come talk to me and they tell me how incredible this doctor is and how much they helped me it really made me realize how passionate you know healthcare providers are and that you know this is something that I want to do more on you know helping others um, and you know helping others understand what they have and going through their rough times. So for me, I think I would say that I did think about wanting to do medical school, but just to make sure that I was making the right decision, I ended up uh, working for a couple of years before going to medical school. Um, Peter says as well, do you recommend attending conferences for the field you want to match into? Yes, thank you for asking that question. I actually forgot to mention that. Um, I attended psychiatry and family medicine conferences whenever I can. I didn't know how it was going to lead me to where I was going to, but I wanted to keep myself up to date 
on the information that uh, psychiatrists and whether it was family physicians were offering. So I did uh, go to um, a lot of psychiatry conferences as well as family medicine and I got to network with people and I got to see um, the other side of medicine which was a research side and be up to date on the knowledge of what was happening, the you know imminent issues that were going on. So I would recommend attending conferences. You know, when I went to my interview Interviews. This is something that I highlighted um, and really showed my passion that I wanted to be a lifelong learner and I was going to figure out any way to get myself to not just do my clinical rotations, you know, um, connect with my attendings, but go outside, meet other people who are community physicians, who are, you know, hospital physicians as well. And honestly, nothing will ever hurt you. And I think, you know, going above and beyond really does show you passion for that field. So does anyone else have any other questions? Perfect. So, you know, at the end of the day, I just wanted to um, let everyone know that there is a light at the end of the tunnel and it's okay to feel overwhelmed. We're all human. Just keep pushing yourself. There's so many resources. If medical school is something that you are thinking of, do it. You know, um, you don't want to regret this later. Talk to people, network with people. You would see so many people that are willing to help you. You know, this goes to any other fields too, whether it's a business, whether, you know, it's in sciences or engineering. There's so many people to help you. And I think that the first thing is, you know, going out, talking to people, expressing your passion. And, you know, when people see that, they are so, they're always go, wanting to go above and beyond to help you. So, you know, never, never take uh, no for any of your chances. And what's the worst someone that's going to say? They're going to say no. At least you tried. And, you know, understand that we all go through ups and downs. And I know, you know, with everything that's going on, it kind of feels like what is actually happening. But um, just understand that things will get better. And, you know, just stay positive and just keep pushing yourself. And, you will get to your um, goal, you will reach your dreams, and it's possible. You know, when, when people said that it was next to impossible without connections to get into a Canadian residency, I didn't know a single person in Canada. Um, I didn't have anyone to vouch for me. I just applied, I did whatever I can, and I got here with no connections, no one helping me, except my friends and family who have stuck with me throughout this whole journey through day one telling me that you know and motivating me and that's all you need you know surround yourself with people that are going to care and who are going to go above and beyond for you um can you share your experiences from rotations and if they played a big role to where you are today yes I did. I do feel that my experience from rotations played a big role to how I am as a person. You know, I met so many patients that gave me so much inspiration when, you know, I would talk about how stressful studying is. They would hold my hands and be like, listen, life is short. Have no regrets. Do what you love. Like after you finish your shift, go to, you know, the park, walk around, have a sandwich, trust me. So I felt like, you know, these little experiences that I learned from my patients as well as my residents and attendings have really shaped me to who I am and has played a big role into me wanting to be a psychiatrist. Specifically, you know, working at Ontario Shores, doing my elective there or my course, sorry. I, that's, I didn't know if I wanted to do psychiatry. I actually was not even thinking about it but it's the patients and the kids that really made me want to do this you know having that relationship with them outside of our interview room you know when they told me hey why don't you come hang out with us on family day and help cook you know banana bread with us that's when I realized like hey like people really want to really get to know you outside of you being a medical student and going in for a rotation. So for me, you know, these experiences from my rotations, from my patients, everything has really made me become a person that uh, 
more passionate person because that's when I understood that, you know, psychiatry is something that I was so passionate about. Um, and that's what I wanted to do because I wanted to help other people, help other children, help, you know, others and kind of break that stigmatization in our community as well as, you know, on a grand scale. What are your goals from uh, here on? Um, my goals uh, is to become a child and adolescent psychiatrist. Um, that was the first rotation that made me so passionate about psychiatry. I can never, I can, that experience working with the children has made me fall in love with trying to help them. And for me, that is something that I'm so passionate about and I want to advocate and help other people and, you know, help um, our community as well as on a grander scale that, you know, mental health doesn't need to be something so stigmatized. You know, all that, all you need is people to understand that we are all humans. We have, you know, rough times and it's okay. Um, having that voice, having, you know, people advocate for you, having that uh, platform to come out, seek help. That is what I'm trying to do. Change um, the world, the community to a better place where, you know, it's okay to come out and ask for help and um, understanding that, you know, we're all human. We all have experiences. Thank you, Laxmi. Um, I hope you found my story inspirational. Uh, Kevin, then well done, Vijitha. Thank you for being such an inspiration. Good luck to you and your future endeavors. Thank you so much. It really means a lot. You know, any way that I can inspire other people, um, you know, when you feel like times are rough, just push through. Chan, that, that's amazing advice. Thanks, Doc. Thank you. Shrika, thank you for your feedback. That was so informative. Thank you so much. And Shashikala, thank you for sharing your journey with us and congratulations. Thank you so much. Um, honestly, it really means a lot for all of you guys to be here today, to take time out of your busy schedule, to listen to everything that I have to say. And I'm not sure if I've um, you know, touched on many points, but if you do have any other questions, if you do have anything about uh, you know, uh, getting into MUA or about the island or anything about matching or anything, I am more than willing to help. Uh, contact Medical University of the Americas. They'll get in touch with me and um, I would be more than happy to answer all your questions to the best of my ability. So I guess those are all the questions. <laughs> Perfect. So thank you guys uh, for tuning in today and just know that anything that you're passionate about, go for it. Um, don't have any regrets and push through whatever it is. I always tell myself everything is temporary and you know, it is. Any situation you're in, everything is, you know, everything's going to get better. You just have to keep, keep pushing move past that, you know, residency is a long way from if you're a medical student um, or doing in clinicals, but we've all been there. It's such a struggle and not giving up is the best thing you can do, even if times are tough. I guess uh, those are, okay, perfect. So thank you once again, and I hope you all stay safe. And uh, good luck with everything that you guys are doing. And if you do have any questions, please send a message and we will be more than happy to answer them. Thank you. Bye.